other land on the world, Ontario, Canada, and an Italian postdoc. I'm going to talk about cophylogeny and tree shape. You, all know, you might all know what is cophylogeny. We are basically interested in finding a distance matrix to measure the concordance or discordance between the two trees of the association, host and parasite of pathogen association. Of course, you might all know that this uh, concordance is higher elevated when there is the rough phenomenon of co-speciation, but it can be it can decrease, of course, while we account for and we uh, we find events of uh, duplication, or switching, uh, or uh, or extinctions. Why tree shape? Tree sh we work our pathogen, our parasites are in this case viruses, and uh, the, the tree of the shape of viruses counts very much for, in our, in our, for virus evolution, we can see that even without looking at the labels of your tree, you might even be recognized uh, what kind of strain you're working, uh, uh, you're working with. Because uh, virus evolution, uh, uh, virus trees have a very particular tree shape. Like for example, influenza A virus, they have a pectinate-like uh, uh, shape uh, because they have a higher rate of evolution, shorter period of infection. There is a main trunk and all of those uh, short, uh, uh, short branches very, that go extinct very rapidly. On the other side, uh, HIV has a star-like tree shape because uh, you, they are basically lots of, uh, there is a higher level, there is a high, higher level of infection. The lineages mostly don't go extinct. So they have the time to accumulate lots of substitution and the branches are very, uh, are very long. Uh, now, there are different ways uh, to compare two trees. You can go by summary statistic, but you can go also by distance matrix. The most famous one is probably the Robinson Folds, and uh, these methods uh, uh, work sometimes just evaluating the topology, such as evaluating the branch lengths, or taking into account both of them. Uh, both of them. But uh, they have been cited many times in literature, especially the Robinson, Robinson Folds, what they actually do is just try to find the rearrangement that you need to, to let the tree number one be equal to the tree number two. Most of our more of the rearrangements are less, more discordance are the tree. However, you can see that in evolutionary study they have been, uh, they have been, uh, they haven't been exploded so much. What we are going to do, what is we, what we propose is a new distance metric based uh, based on a kernel function which actually uh, computes in, a, in an efficient way uh, uh, the, the, the comparison between the two trees uh, uh, exploiting uh, uh, inner products. Basically, let's think that our trees are, are uh, journal papers, number one, two, and three. If, if you actually want to compare those uh, papers uh, to see which is, most, which is the couple most similar to each other, you have to make lots of comparison in linguistic English because you have to find all of the, all of the scores for every single word. However, if you use the inner products, you just eliminate, you, you pass from a high dimensionality feature space to a low dimensionality because all the words that don't compare in the comparison that you are making are of course, are of course uh, being multiplied by zero. So that's gonna reduce a lot your dimensionality. And at the end, you're gonna have every single score which you can uh, transfer to a kernel similarity matrix like and uh, being, being much better visible as a PCA, I'm gonna show you. In our example, of course, the words are the shapes. So um, uh, like you're gonna evaluate what are the subset ascending every single node? You want to compare every single node of the first tree with the second tree. So, uh, what is topology? After the, the ascending, the ascending subsets means that those nodes as an ascending, uh, uh, as a one, where a couple of nodes which might be either terminal, which might be internal, or internal or terminal. And that's topology. You're going to compare that. However, there is a second thing that we're going to count: the branch length. Its topology is equal, but the branch length is not absolutely equal. It's on two different scale. That's going to be penalized, the distance score. So, and uh, the last characteristic of our kernel matrix is considered at the end of the tree the tips. Of course, we consider also the association, the final association of the tips uh, comparing the tree number one and the tree number two. Now, we use different approach to see if our kernel matrix works well. The first one has been already published, number one. We just uh, uh, put it uh, on a PCA 
or just by this phylogeny, we just compare to each other, just to evaluate the kernel tree and to see if we can, we can see some nice clusters. The second one is adding to the first one the Eros phylogeny, and then we constructed the simulation uh, nice script code to actually get and host the real host tree and simulate the virus phylogeny on that with certain characteristics, I will explain that, and to evaluate then the kernel score. The first which is, has been published, show you just putting virus phylogeny on, on there, uh, that sometimes we are able to, to pick different, with different parameters, uh, branch left penalization, uh, considering or not the, the labels, etc. We are able to, be, to, to, to pick some strains which cluster together, like the green one, dengue, the orange one, HCV, hepatitis C, the red one, HIV. The second approach we, 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 which I am working now illustrates two, two important features of our kernel. When we have, we have 19 virus family, uh, RNA, DNA viruses all together in the analysis, we collected their respective 19 host phylogeny, which I have to tell you expands from vertebrates, birds, mammals, sometimes plants, etc. And we put them on the PCA after we evaluated the pairwise comparison kernel score. On the first images on the top, we don't consider uh, we don't consider label, just topology. So we have all of them there. However, when we are going to start on uh, the labels, we can see this nice couple here, which is actually the epadenavili the V uh, association, the virus, the family virus, which is recognized by many studies being very cospeciating, very much congruent with, uh, with its host phylogeny. So in a phenomena of cospeciation, cospeciation our kernel matrix is basically able to, to get it. So there are different, now I'm not, which, which, which uh, with this slide I'm just acknowledging uh, all of the different uh, methods and software citation for simulating the data of trees. Uh, uh, it's a plethora of things. We made our, uh, our own, actually. We call it an asset coalescent. It's a Python script. We are going into the third approach. Basically, we get the host tree of that Epadna Vilita, and we simulate with different parameters our virus phylogeny on the tree. Uh, which are these parameters? Coalescent rate within pathogen, pathogens or parasites, migration rate, ACA host switch, and probability of cospeciation. So it's a coalescent simulation of a pathogen within a host tree, given a constant effective population size within a host, <coughs> and a transmission bottleneck to one lineage. We started just to consider one pathogen lineage sample curves. So it's a coalescent back in time process. We start at the far strip of the tree. We initialize the host and its pathogen inside. And uh, we actually see what comes next. In this case, BP get initialized in its, uh, in its host B. We draw a waiting time here. If the waiting time is actually larger than the next uh, node appearing on the tree, that's going to be a cospeciation event. I'm just showing you an example where cospeciation uh, host switch and, and uh, coalition within pathogens are equiprobable. Uh, they are set all, all of them to one. If we set at this point in time, we're going to have for any single host the pathogen initialized and uh, just one lineage of pathogen. So if the, we draw another shorter interval time in an exponential distribution as a coalescent way and we are not an equalized coalescent host node, we're going to have just a migration event. But with this migration event, uh, we're going to have on the host D, we're going to have another, we're going to have two lineages. And here I'm showing you the example, uh, having shown another waiting, waiting time, which is shorter to the root this time, most coalescence, we can have a coalescence within pathogens. Coalescence within pathogens goes going back forward, back, back in time. If you look at that for time, it's basically a duplication event. And then at the end, we're going to get another interval and we're going to get the coalescence within. Basically, at the end, we're going to have two slightly different uh, trees and we're going to uh, get the kernel uh, score for those. Now, I'm just showing you some few situations where I, I have some constant parameter and I, and I change some others. Migration rate here is the pa parameter that we are looking. We are changing it 
keeping constant the L, which is the coalescence within pathogens, the duplication event, and the, a probability of co-speciation, P1. In the first slide on the top left, you can see that it's just topology. When it's just topology, and we increase the migration time, we're going to go from one, more or less, kernel score to 0 0.6. So it's like just a, considering just the shape of the tree, it gets saturated, our signal. It cannot go over tree, it cannot go over to zero. There is a level of disconcert of the tree when we enhance the migration rate that we cannot go further. But however, when we put sigma 0, 1, which means that we are also evaluating the tips, we are able to get the whole range from 1 to 0. So, we, so our tree are very becoming disconcerted because we are evaluating also the tips. And at the, if we take some of those uh, uh, mid, mid, uh, place, uh, some of those values of migration, and we just uh, uh, randomly pick 10 trees out of the 100 we, that we, we put, and uh, we put them on a Dave's kernel score on a similarity matrix PCA, we can see some clusters that are came, coming out. So increasing the migration rate from here, counterclockwise, uh, will pass from a, a completely concordance uh, between the two trees. The blue is the host and the red is the pathogen with completely discordance on the other side, where, uh, where, in the, where we see that it's just shrink, pull over, and ve with very short branches, the, the pathogen trees. Doing the opposite way with duplication rate, uh, duplication is its coalescence within pathogens, and, uh, but this time migration and co-speciation events are very low, zero, we see the opposite way. Basically, we just evaluated again the topology, there is a saturation in the topology from 0.6 to 1. So that means that increasing the duplication event, there is more, much more concordance in the two trees. And we also get a more expanding range when we turn on the label here. And we get some features, some clusters on the, on the PCA. So that means that decreasing the duplication rate when migration and cospiciation are very low, we get the opposite way of whatever we saw before. From concordance, we still see discordance. But this time, the red one, the red tree, is, a, is the pathogen tree. It has long, long, long branches than the, the blue one, which is shrinks, so which is. Because in this way, uh, when we decrease the duplication rate, all of the all of, we will return to the host to the host to the root sorry to the root host node where all the coalescence haven't happened before. The coalescence rate is very small. All of the lineage is basic never coalesce. They go they end up all of being in that in that root and then they are forced to coalesce. And that's why they have these long branches. At the end we have created just a new distance which is able to evaluate the branch length, to evaluate the topology, to evaluate the tips. Unlike the Robinson folds, I'm just citing that because it's the most common, you can, you can compare two trees that have different number of tips. You're not al you are allowed to do that, like, unlike the Robinson folds. And our kernel method, we are starting to evaluate the cohologeny across disparate taxa not only just the association between an host and, and viruses. Then we want to see what happens uh, and which are the parameters that, are fine, that can be finely tuned to actually reconstruct the virus simulation, not on the, on the host tree, but the, on the real virus tree, to see what are the best parameters that can reconstruct, in that case, the real virus tree. Thank you very much.